August the 31st, and we have reached the end of this vlogish journey together. Um, I have really enjoyed doing this. We'll talk more about that at the end today. Um, I am here at <laughs> Sonic getting a Coke so that I can make it through the morning. Um, enjoyed a visit with some friends last night at the Escape Ranch. They're very excited to get the event started today. Met one of our um, VIPs, Selena Fox, and visited with her, and then another VIP who is also a friend of mine, Louis Guru. He came in yesterday, so I got to visit with him for quite a while, and um, it was a good time. It rained a little bit, but it was kind of peaceful sitting up there in the rain, uh, and then I came in and um, finished watching up a documentary series called Victorian Farm on BBC. Uh, it's on YouTube, and so I've been watching it on YouTube, but it's really cool. It's um, These historians have been living on a Victorian-era farm in Shropshire, England, and they restored everything, and they did everything with um, Victorian tools, and it was really cool for me because they used a lot of draft horses, a lot of heavy horses, and that's just amazing to me. That's something that I so want to learn to do. Um, so I can't, I looked up some, some workshops and classes about it. There's one in Montana uh, by a gentleman, I can't call his name to mind. Sorry, Nicole brought my order. <laughs> anyway, it's really cool and uh, Doc something, my friend Ray sent me a link to it, but it's a $1,400 fee for the workshop and that includes your accommodations for the week. So I think that's fairly reasonable. You gotta get to the place in Montana but uh, anyway, so yeah, I'm, I'm, that's something I'm going to put on my bucket list of things that I want to do. But anyway, got my drink here. So I'm going to head on down the road and get ready for the morning. Well, I'm here at work and I made the mistake of reading the news. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, it's no secret where my, my, personal opinions about things lie, and I try not to be overly zealous with those things. So, I'll just leave that alone, but I was reading a thing about a GoFundMe campaign these people started to help a homeless veteran, and then they kept the money. They said, oh, well, we took time out of our schedules to to help this guy, so we're entitled to some of this money. And I'm pretty sure that that was not what the people who donated to the GoFundMe campaign thought was going to happen to that money. You know, when they, the, the old phrase, money is the root of all evil, is about the truth, y'all. I have never seen people act more hateful and more horrible than when there was money involved. And it don't have to be a lot of money. It can be a little bit of money. It can be whatever. I mean, everything from, you know, the families who get into these huge fights when someone dies and there's a little bit of inheritance involved to, I've got somebody that owes me $200 right now and they've owed it to me for two years for some birds and some cages and some wire that I gave them. And I gave them about $700 worth of stuff for $300 and... They just blew me off. They just don't talk to me. And I promise you, if I were to go to the bird websites and say this person is a faithless trader, you know, because they don't trade fairly, they don't do what... And I even gave them the opportunity to say, okay, if you don't have any money, I could use some work done around my place. You could help me. You know. And this was after I had sold a girl, an Angora goat kid... And she was going to spin some wool for me. Never got any of that. I drove it to her. I drove it three hours to her. Never got a dime of money for that Angora goat. <sighs> you know, and I'm an idiot for letting people pay things out. But I've had to do that before, so I try to extend the same courtesy to other people. Money makes people bad, y'all. It just makes people act ridiculous. I mean, 
I don't know, even when my parents died and there was no money, there was no inheritance, there was, no, there was a little bit of life insurance, and it wasn't even enough to pay, completely pay for their funerals, you know, and I had a cousin show up at my house. My mom, my dad died in August. My mom died the following April. And in about the following July, this cousin of mine who I haven't seen in probably 10 years. And when I, when he was around, he's a, you know, alcoholic who used to beat his wife up and all this stuff. He comes rolling up in the yard one day and comes in the house. And you know how people will walk around and they'll be like looking at stuff like you can tell they're kind of sizing it up and they'll be picking it up and putting it down. And they said... I guess we, Berkeley and Betty left you pretty well fixed. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he said, well, you know, you got all this. And I said, I bought this. I bought this because it was so deeply in debt that they were about to lose it. I, they didn't fix me and up. They fixed me all right, but they didn't fix me up. It just burned me up. He somehow thought that he was entitled to something. For what? He, I never saw him help my folks one bit. You know, I mean, I was just like, are you kidding? You need to leave now. <laughs> you need to get out of my house. Um, but anyway, so money makes people act terrible. You know, it, and I guess I say this as someone who's never had a lot of money to worry about, you know, but I don't know. Anyway, I'm real careful about what I donate to, you know, I have people sending me donation things because they think because I'm a university professor, I must be making money hand over fist and I'm not, I have a farm. But you know, people send me donation stuff all the time and I'm real particular about where I put my money. I mean, I use Charity Tracker and like for local stuff, if I can give them goods instead of money. That's what I'm going to do, you know, if I can buy them feed or supplies for the dog rescues or if I can go help instead of give them money. It's just that it's easier to be an angel in heaven. <laughs> anyway, that just kind of, I wish I hadn't read the news this morning. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, I am here on campus. Uh, and we're going to go in and get started. I'm, I, I ended up leaving a little bit late today. So I'm probably not going to get my walk in until in between my classes. And then I get to go to the tag office and get tags for my car. And I'm going to be one of those people that's waited till the last day of the month because it's payday. Yay! <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go pick up my tags and go get my nails done because they are too long. And I have lost a couple and they look terrible. So I'm going to go get my nails done and then probably head to the house and feed and water. I've got to go to the mailbox, the mailbox, the post office, and mail the prizes. And I've got a couple of other things that I need to mail for some people. Um, and I, I will say this, uh, the lady from April 9 Designs is going to donate to the I'm Worth It Make Along. So we already have our first prize on the way for that. So I am very excited. Um, but anyway, so I am headed into my office and we'll see what we can get up to. Well, I'm done with my classes and now I found out where there was a tag office here in Conway. So that will save me having to take a trip to Russellville. I'll just get my nails done tomorrow. So I'm going to go check out this tag office and see if it's not too super busy. Well, I got my tags and that went fairly quickly. I think I was only in there about 30 minutes. Um, and it was a fairly significant line, so I was pretty impressed with that. Um, you may not have even been in there that long. But anyway, uh, and I found out about, we have to, we've changed over to the real ID driver's licenses, so I've got to get a new driver's license. Even though I had mine renewed last year, I'll have to get it eventually. So, um, anyway, so yeah, now I'm gonna go find something to eat, and I've gotta go by the feed store because I gave away my bag of cat food, too, yesterday to somebody that needed it more than I did. Um, so I gotta go get another bag of cat food, and let's see, what else do I have to do today? I went to the bank. Oh, I need to go to the post office and mail prizes. Yay, I'm going to do that next, too. So, all right, next adventure. Okay, well, I'm here at our local post office, and I just put my prizes in the mail. So, Jessica and Christine, you should be looking for those. Um, and then I also, Vanessa, I mailed you a little surprise, so I hope you enjoy that. Um, yeah, so my errands are done. 
So I am gonna head home and change clothes and check on everybody's water and feed and do all that good stuff. So it's a beautiful, bright, sunny day here. So that makes it good. And yeah, I've been talking with Miss Marianne a little bit about Gusty. Um, Zoe has been helping brown sugar, so Gusty kind of needs a new job. So I'm going to let her start using Gusty for lessons, the beginner lessons, just to keep Gusty ridden. Although I am going to start schooling her also again to go to the shows next year. And I love a horse that knows the difference. She is such a good mare. She knows the difference between when she has a beginner rider on her and when I'm on her. And I mean, my classic example of that was I was using her in a lead line class and um, at that time the young man was my godson and they brought him to a show when he was six months old and I was warming her up and she knows when she's at a show she is very competitive and she was fire breathing dragon I mean just bowed up and looking like she was on fire and you could tell the granddad's eyes were getting huge he's like and he's kind of afraid of horses anyway he said is she gonna be okay and I'm like she'll know the difference I promise you and the minute they got up on her, because in lead line, you, he was six months old, so his mother rode with him. She dropped her head, and she was like an old plow horse. And they were like, I can't believe the difference. I said, she knows. And when I got back on her for my part, man, she, she swept the ribbons. It was so awesome. But I'm like, man, that's a good horse. I wouldn't take a million dollars for that little mare. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to head to the house now and uh, do our chores. Ooh, I got fun mail today from Penn Alchemy. I got Science Matters and get this one. Teacher with periodic table. That's technetium, actinium, hydrogen, and erbium, which is an element. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, um, yeah, so got that. I also got what I call my wish book from Stark's Brothers. Stark Brothers. That's where I order a lot of my fruit trees from. So I'm going to look through that and see what I can't get up to for this fall. As sacred space. Bless this place as sacred space. So we're finishing up out here tonight at the Escape Ranch at this year's retreat. And uh, they're getting ready to have a concert. Celia Farrow is going to do a concert here in a little bit, but I'm going to have to head home and take care of the crew because I've got to get up in the morning and go to the Rainbow Riders play day. So I'm going to sign off for this event and head to the house. Oh, dear Fidelis. Love, love, love. Oh, love, love, love. Oh, she's a good girl. She's so good. And Fizzy's here. Yes, love, love, love. Love, love, love. Oh, love. Oh, love, love, love. Well, it is about 8 o'clock. I just got home from helping out at the Escape Ranch at the event. I had a wonderful visit with my friend Louis Guru, who is going to be performing Sunday night. And I also had a really wonderful talk about plants and trees and sort of the natural history of um this part of the the state uh with selena fox it was very wonderful to share um with her about some of our native trees and plant species and how unique that this part of my little world is uh, i really love living here in the in the ozarks and there's so many wonderful amazing things about about these mountains and you get a little bit of these mountains in you you're never going to fully get away from them i don't think so um, I enjoyed that tonight and um, had a good dinner, looked at some of the vendors, found a couple of things I'm going to have to go get some money out of the ATM for. Um, and then tomorrow morning we've got our Rainbow Rider play day and then tomorrow afternoon I'm going to go back out and help at the Escape Ranch and stay for the Mama Gina concert. Um, I've really very much enjoyed this event so far because it helps refresh my spirit and remind me that this land is a spiritual practice as well as a physical and a mental and a financial practice. You know, my my spiritual spiritual life is just as tied to this these old mountains and hills and these animals and the things that I do as anything out there and so it's been a very wonderful and refreshing um, event for me to remember that um, 
I teach on Sunday morning about the science behind weather lore, and I'm very excited to share what I know about that, and I hope it's well attended. Um, there was a really good workshop today that Selena Fox did about home blessings, so blessing and and your home and making it welcoming and inviting both physically and spiritually. Um, and I, I enjoy that very much. So uh, I think I'm gonna sign off with this last vlogist. I have really enjoyed sharing my life with you guys for the last month. I've enjoyed all the wonderful feedback. Uh, and visiting with with you um, thank you so much for sticking with me through this 31 day journey it has meant a lot and I think in part it is part of my spiritual practice to appreciate where I live <coughs> and love where I live and, and share the beauty of this day-to-day -day life here on the farm and of the wonders of nature and science with you guys so I am so grateful for those of y'all who have come along with me on this journey and maybe we'll do it again someday uh, until I talk to y'all next time though y'all know what I'm gonna say but I'm gonna say it anyway <coughs> y'all be good to each other and take care of each other and peace out y'all bye